So now it is my great pleasure to introduce a woman I, who I consider my friend and colleague. She's traveled to more than 25 countries in the last 16 months, seeking out some of the world's most unique young people and projects worldwide in order to fulfill her mission as the first special representative to Muslim communities. She was appointed in 2009 by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to execute the vision of engaging Muslims around the world on a people-to-people -people level. Her accomplishments to date are too many to mention, but she has brought her passion for people, her extremely high energy, and her dedication and commitment to every position she has ever, ever held. I'm honored to tell people that she works for our government because she is a beacon in a very complicated landscape. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me give a warm welcome to Special Representative Ms. Farah Pandith. Absolute delight. Good evening, everyone. And Nancy, thank you very much for that very kind introduction. Nancy is not only a friend, but one of the things that friends do best is to put things in perspective and help you think out of the box. And she's been doing that with me for about a year, and I feel very privileged about it. As Nancy said, I'm the special representative to Muslim communities. And in that capacity, I'm going around the world, working with our embassies to look at how we can engage in a new way. President Obama said in Cairo more than a year ago that he wants to engage the world on a framework built on mutual interest and mutual respect. What we are trying to do around the world is to think out of the box and to work on a people-to-people -people level locally and with communities so that we are finding ways that the United States can be the convener, the facilitator, and the intellectual partner with the ideas that we hear on the ground. Part of the work that is so special and why I'm here tonight and feel so fortunate to be part of this wonderful family is to think about the perspectives that young people bring to the table. In my work reaching out to Muslim communities, there are approximately 1.6 billion Muslims on the planet. That's one fourth of humanity. Most of those people are under the age of 30. And as I listen to what these young people have to say and how they want to be bridges of understanding and dialogue and partnership, how they can work together on issues as pluralism and as important as interfaith, I think we're in a really great stance. Nancy talked about the fact that over the past 16 months, I've been traveling around the world. And in fact, I have been to more than 25 countries. But the first country that I went to as special representative was Nigeria. Nigeria is a very important place on this planet. It is not only significant in the continent of Africa, but its rich traditions of Christianity and Islam come together in very special ways. Today we are honoring an imam and a pastor who were once enemies and are now peacemakers. They are agents of change. The global teen leaders that you saw on this stage represent the future. They represent the kinds of people that we are trying to reach out to, the kinds of ideas and innovation and charisma and energy and passion that our world needs, with the kind of inspiration that they can get from the imam and the pastor. We are looking at a new generation of, of peacemakers, and in the video that you're about to see, you're going to be inspired too. Congratulations to both the imam and the pastor, and congratulations to the global teen leaders who are my inspiration. Thank you so much and enjoy the video.